Today, you and I are going to be watching a video interview of a guy named Ann Cush who was told at the age of 21 years old that he would have to have both hips replaced, that there was no hope whatsoever of him being able to save his original equipment, that there was no way he would be able to continue running or playing sports, that he had to just stop sit on his butt and wait until he turned somewhere around 30 where he'd probably need to have both hips replaced. He found the FAI fix and started doing the program. He did some personal coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching with my co-creator Shane. And in this video, they talk about what happened when Ann Kush decided to take things into his own hands and ignore the advice that one of the top surgeons in the United States gave him. If you have been told you have hip impingement and your life is over and there's nothing you can do but surgery, I want you to watch this whole video so you understand what kind of traps there are, what kind of tricks there are for you to get better, and what you can expect in terms of trials and tribulations as you are trying to make progress gradually over time. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Surgeon. Let's go. And what was his advice to you? Yeah, so this is, this is like, top one or top two surgeon for specifically FAI um, in, in the country, in, in the United States. And he told me that based on the shape of your hips, your extreme form of FAI, like the hip arthroscopy procedure that a lot of you probably have maybe gotten consulted for um, or been recommended, wouldn't work for me because my hips were in too bad of a state. And his advice was hip arthroscopy will probably make things worse, uh, your best bet most likely is to stop running, stop walking. Sorry, only walk. And then once walking becomes too unbearable for you, probably in like your late 20s, early 30s, uh, you can go in for, for bilateral hip replacement. That was his advice. Okay, I love how Ann Kush is laughing right now. Um, and he's laughing right now because he has the, the context of having already beat his hip pain. And he can see how absolutely ridiculous this top one or two surgeon's advice was. Um, I can, I can guess. There's, there's really, there's only a couple big names in hip surgery in the United States uh, for FAI, and um, you know, to, to hear this kind of stuff shows you right off the bat just how ridiculous um, the confidence levels are from surgeons about telling people what's gonna happen to their bodies, right? He's telling a 21 year old man, hey, your body already expired, your hips are already busted up, you can't do anything, you, you just stop doing everything, You're gonna, all you can do is walk now. How crazy is that? It's unbelievable, it makes me so just, ew. all right, let's, watch, let's keep watching because luckily this gets better. Stop everything until it gets so bad that you can't bear it and then get both hips replaced. Yes, exactly. Wow, and you didn't do that. And is it getting worse and worse and worse? No, it's, it's, it's only getting better and better. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, it's getting better and better. Uh, I love how <laughs> both Shane and Ann Kush and I am all, we're all laughing because it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd to tell somebody who's 21 years old based on some MRI or x-ray, uh, you're done. You're just done. That's it. Nothing, nothing could possibly go better for you. It's just absolutely insane. He's getting better. He's consistently getting better. So I wanted to thank you for being on this call. Uh, you sent me an awesome email, which I'm going to read really quick, and then I want you to just tell your story. So you said, you wrote me an email and said, I thought I wanted to give you another update on my FAI progress. And then you wrote a little bit. And at the end, you said, I just want to thank you for all your help and knowledge you've given me and everyone else struggling with this. The FAI fix and your content online are incredible resources. I can't articulate how ecstatic I am to begin to actually move free again. It feels like I've got my life back. Woo. Okay. Awesome. Love seeing emails like that. So awesome. And when I read that, I was like, that's badass. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hear more because we've talked online and in person and periodically you'll send me updates about how it's going. And, um, it sounds like it's been even really improving. So why don't you take the next, however long you need and just share from the beginning, how were your hips? What about my programs or my help, help them? And where are you now? 
over. For sure, years. yeah. So I, I've had a very long, long injury history. Um, I've played sports my whole life. I started playing tennis around the age of uh, seven or so, and then I played uh, that until 10th grade, and then in 8th grade I picked That's not him. <laughs> I Just goofing. I mean, obviously that's not him, but it's video editing. you got to put something in there. Eighth grade, I picked up cross That's country, not him either. and those are sort of the two sports that I really played throughout high school. But in eleventh grade, during cross country, I started to get really, really bad shin splints, and then as it sort of transitioned into the sort of track and tennis time, I would just get really bad patellar tendonitis. Um, I was just looking for all these ways to just salvage some sort of season from those last two years of of uh, college. So I just want to pause it here because this is a really familiar pattern with a lot of people who are athletic and have competitive things that they're looking to do. He was already having issues with his lower body. Different parts of his lower body were already being overtaxed. Muscles are starting to complain. He's getting shin splints, which is muscles in the lower leg basically going crazy ankle stuff foot stuff is not working well and he's doing track right cross country he's running a bunch this is high volume activity that's already training in dysfunction into his lower body but he's ignoring it and that's that's what we're told to do when we're younger right if stuff starts to hurt you just walk it off run it off it'll get better after a week just keep going Instead of things getting better, they actually will start to snowball, which we'll start to see. And, you know, I started doing some eccentric squats and some, you know, recommended things for, the, I guess, what a lot of, what, like, knees over toes guys sort of prescribing now. Um, and that, that really helped my knees at the time. But around that time is when I started to develop this sort of little pinching in my left hip. My hips had already, always been super tight. Even as a kid, I actually lost the ability to sit crisscross around the age of, like, eight years old. Okay. At eight years old, he lost the ability to sit crisscross applesauce. That should tell you something. His hip mobility, the muscles around his hips were already dysfunctional for whatever reason. Eight years old, he's already been in school for a couple of years, probably sitting a lot. I don't know. We'll see. Anytime we sat on the ground as a kid, that was kind of annoying for me. But um, yeah, just started losing slowly more and more mobility on the left side, started getting pinchy. Um, I thought, you know, just stretching alone could get me out of it and I just I spent a lot of time stretching. I also noticed some tightness around like my hamstring area. I thought maybe that was the root cause and spent a lot of time like just foam rolling it, not like not really stretching it too much, but just foam rolling a lot to the point where uh, there, there was some, there was some every week, every Saturday I'd foam roll it for like four hours. And then I remember like at, at the end, my, I would be like a tear, like a tear or two rolling to my eyes, just extremely painful. Okay. If you're spending four hours foam rolling something, it's too long. Uh, and, and I'm sure Ann Krish at this point will tell you that it's too long. There's there's nothing that requires four hours of foam rolling. You're not going to fix anything by foam rolling for that long, so don't do that. But didn't didn't really get much uh, benefit from that. So I, I sort of left, uh, finished up high school. I went to college. It was just slowly getting worse and worse. Not entirely sure, uh, you know, what the root cause is and, and how to fix it. And then I, I started lifting weights in, in college. That, I think, exacerbated it even more. Um, I wasn't very smart with it. You know, the sort of younger athlete mentality is just pushed through the pain. I, I don't know why. <laughs> so there he's highlighting exactly what I just mentioned, right? It's pushed through the pain, keep going, especially when you're in college. I did this too. College age, you go into the gym, you're with your buddies, you're trying to lift as much as possible, just trying to bump the weight up every single week because you're young and strong and whatever, and then... You just make everything worse because you're putting, you're adding weird bits of strength on top of a very shaky foundation. If he couldn't sit crisscross applesauce, his hips were already really stiff. And then he had all these other things happening with his lower leg, and now he's adding weight. But it, you just kind of do it. I don't know. You just you're just in love with the activity, I guess. Just getting worse and worse, and. Uh... Eventually, I, I realized that, you know, I'm going to have a lot of consequences with this later down in my life uh, if I don't address it now. And so I began looking uh, online for, for ways to, to fix it. I found the FAI fix around, uh, I believe, winter of 2019 going into 2020. And I started doing that alongside my lifting. I just want to pause it here and point out that he, he took it upon himself to think ahead and realize, hmm, this is not headed in a good direction. That's very important because a lot of us, 
I mean, as humans in this very fast-paced world, we'll often get caught in this like short-term view of things, and and then we get screwed because all of a sudden, boom, something hits us, and we're like, uh, how was I supposed to know that was gonna happen? If you pause in your life and take a look, try to to move ahead and think about what's coming, it can be really helpful. And for him to have done it at a young age literally saved his hips saved his life right so then he starts looking around and that uh definitely brought me some uh, short-term relief like especially before the lifting creating some space in the hips it allowed me to get into some positions i wasn't able to but uh for some reason it wasn't creating the long-term changes that i needed and so after about a year of doing that i believe that you and i started working together And then things really started to start opening up in the hips. A lot of people talk smack about uh, like the foam rolling and the tissue work. FAI Fix program, I think we did as best we could and we continue to work with it as much as we can to make it apply to as many people as possible. But it's an online program that has to make assumptions about people that will never unfortunately be able to meet because there's only so many hours in in the day. And so, and Kush was using the program getting some progress, some benefits, but the one-on-one help with somebody who's able to help him think through the problems, that's a huge difference. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying you have to have one-on-one help. I'm just saying if you can find good one-on-one help, it'll probably be you know, at least some benefit to you, but you just have to find somebody who's reasonably good who understands how to think through muscle issues who will help you troubleshoot and not somebody who will just say well you have a bone problem and nothing can fix that but surgery like unfortunately many physical therapists will tell you and you know some of the what they say about it not lasting like more than a couple hours may be valid but you also have to remember that like the couple hours that you get from it is an incredible opportunity to go in there lengthen and strengthen and create some like actual long-term change and that, uh, you know, taking that mentality and sort of backing off the training a little bit, using the training to actually make my body feel good, to actually do what I, I wanted to do in, in my hips, which is to open them up, uh, really, really started to benefit me. You know, slowly but surely, we, we made more changes. And Oh, man. that's so, Okay, so super important to point that out, right? You can't just rely on foam rolling alone to fix everything. There's, there's some rare situations for some random people where it's like, yeah, well, that fixed me. Room Foam rolling was it. But what he's saying is the foam rolling can give you the opportunity to really improve function. Great. That's what you're looking for. You want to improve long-term function. Some people, I'll just point out here, some people don't need to be doing a ton of foam rolling or any sometimes because they're already so loosey-goosey and it's all good. They need to build strength, right? But for some people like Ankush, they're really stiff, they're really immobile. Sometimes that massage work can help open things up and then... He has the ability to get some more flexibility, get some strength in these lengthened positions, and that's key. Started to open things up, and then at the, be- at the beginning of this year is when things really started to shift. On one of the calls towards the end, you and I were talking about the importance of like the lower leg and like foot and ankle positioning, mm-hmm. and that sort of started me off on this big expedition into looking into how like the ankle and foot is supposed to move. Just looking through that, going back over the old FAI resources, going back over through everything and just continuing with the tissue work and continuing to be smart with the training and, and use it to benefit me is, you know, really, really what started to open things up. And uh, I've just seen like immense changes in, in my body, you know. I really like how he's describing training as, as using training to benefit himself. Uh, a lot of times people think of training as like a competition marker, right? Rather than something that you use to improve yourself, you're using it as a way to gauge Um, your abilities versus others or gauge yourself versus some other metric some external metric like well if i'm 140 pounds i should be able to bench press x if i want people to be impressed by me what he's talking about doing is saying i'm going to train my body so i feel good so that i can move correctly so i function well that's a very different mentality than i need to move enough weight to be impressive to a stranger who I meet on the internet. The whole hip thing, you know, really depressed me for a while. Two years ago, almost exactly, I, I saw like a bunch of specialists for it. 
So I went in for an X-ray. I went in for MRIs. You know, I went to some pretty good specialists. I'm I'm from Florida, but I, I went and I you know emailed my MRI results over to like maybe like the best or second best FAI specific orthopedic surgeon in Michigan, and he basically told me that like your hips are are, are done. Uh, your hip sockets are, are twice as deep as they're supposed to be. They're running into each other at like 60 degrees of flexion. And uh, you really should just stop all activity except maybe walking. And that made me really sad. And uh, just to be able to to like run again, you know, to, to like squat pain-free, to just do a lot of these things that like we are, we are all have been able. Okay, so I just want to show something here. When you're talking about the way a hip joint moves... And they're saying the hip socket is too deep and then the bones run into each other too soon. That's assuming that the trajectory, the path that the femur takes is a fixed path and that your muscles cannot alter the path of the bones to avoid collision. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all to say, oh yeah, there's a fixed path here. And if the bones are running into each other, there's nothing you can do but cut the bones out of the way. It is 100% preposterous to say that the bone collisions are unavoidable. That's like saying, oh, I my forehead, my forehead must be too big it's congenitally too big because my forearm keeps running into my forehead but it the position of your bones in space the way they relate to each other is determined by the muscles i'm using muscles to move my bone into this bone if you're talking about moving these bones in a way where they don't collide it means training the muscles to stop forcing them to collide if I constantly am running into something here, it's because I haven't trained the muscles to get things to articulate correctly. It's not because the bone is shaped wrong, it's because the muscle is not doing the job right. Able to do since we were, or we were able to do it since we were kids um, has been excellent, not only for my physical health, but just like my mental health and just being you know, content and satisfied. I have a lot of energy, I need to get it out somehow. So it, it kind of sucks when you can't use your hips and body properly. But yeah, totally. that's sort of my totally. story, I guess. I know that from experience. Amen to that, Ann Kush. Yeah, it really sucks if you can't use your body. So this is why I say, you know, don't get caught in rips, rest, ice, injections, pills, and surgery. Because if you're somebody who's active, and really all of us should be, if you have that energy in your body and you want to get out and move, and the prescription you get is to just sit on your butt and wait till you get so crippled that you can't walk anymore, how are you going to feel internally, spiritually? Yeah, not great. About to have that all sort of seemingly taken away from you at a young age. I know, yeah. 20s is like, what? Like, this is supposed yeah. to happen when you're 60. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, like, you mentioned some of those things, like squatting, walking, running. Like, can you give me a snapshot of, like, what couldn't you do before that you can now do? I'll start with the stuff that, the, the small stuff that really, that really I wasn't able to do. At, at the peak, at the at the worst pain of my FAI, I remember I was sitting on the toilet in the morning, right? You go to the bathroom and it just excruciated. It just felt like my help was like my hip was like degenerating actively, just as I would if I if I would sit on the toilet, just really, really bad pain. The worst thing was like putting oh, on my yeah. socks. I could barely put on my Ouch. socks. Like I would have to like do fifteen minutes of stretching and then like contort my back and like just jam my knee up in order to get my socks on. I have, I have kind of long legs, so I'm going to partially blame it on that. But it was it was really bad. And, you know, now all those day-to-day -day activities, I don't even think about them. You know, I, I, I sit if I need to. I put on socks. <laughs> I love it. I have really long legs, so I can't put on my socks. That's, uh, I love it. Immediately if I need to. You know, um, overall, it's just like a much more hip-dominant way of moving. I, I feel like that's that's really important. <laughs> Uh, maybe that should be a slogan for the FAI Fix program. Um, you can put your socks on whenever you want to. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, that's a huge victory. If you go from feeling uh, unable to put on your own socks to being able to put them on yourself, that's great. Like, when my son learned how to put on his own socks, he was very happy. And as an adult, I think you'd be even happier because, you know, if you lose it and you get it back, you're like, whoo. I'm slowly working. I, I'm actually not that far from being able to sit crisscross. I can sit in butterfly. My knees are still a little high, but working on getting that lower. But it, it, like, it feels even in my hips. It feels pain-free. I couldn't even imagine sitting on the ground. 
not even in butterfly with my legs straight at, at the start of all this. Nice. I used to swim too. Awesome. I, there was a period after the, the doctors told me not to do anything where I was swimming. And after a while, I would swim long, long distances, like maybe a mile, mile and a half. And my hips would start bothering. Like, how is this, how does this have anything to do with the hips? But, you know, now I, I'm swimming, you know, somewhat regularly and the hips feel great. I actually a lot faster now that they can actually rotate properly. Just everything. You know, I uh, started playing some pickup soccer recently. Not not too much, but just, just light easing my way back into the running and stuff. And, you know, absolutely pain free. My hips aren't like locking up. The main thing is that they, they can rotate properly and in motion. And that's, I couldn't really ask for more than that. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, yeah. from like, dude, that is amazing. If you're 21, you're told, sorry, your hips are so bad, you're gonna need surgery. Now there's no hope. Now he's swimming, playing soccer, doing whatever, gradually increasing his abilities. If the FAI bone shape theory is correct, this is not possible. It's literally not possible to make this kind of improvement in this short amount of time if the FAI bone theory is true. And this is just one more case that shows that this theory of like, oh, your bone shapes are too bad, your, your hip sockets are too deep or whatever, or your bone is not spherical. Like this is, this is all stuff that drives you to make a very unscientific and unsafe decision to do surgery. This guy is showing exactly what happens when you take the time to really learn how your body works and then improve it. Putting on your socks hurt, sitting on the toilet hurts, <laughs> yeah. walking, running, squatting, like everything hurting. Doctor saying, your hips are a mess, kid. Like, just give up, basically just stop doing anything. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, to where you are now, that's some that's progress. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Two interesting things. One, you saw a lot of specialists and mm -hmm. kind of the, a ton, yeah. the best that they could give you was like just stop doing stuff it sounds like that's yeah. one interesting part to me because yeah. like is that is that really the best that we can offer people who are your age dealing with bad hip problems i don't think so obviously the other interesting part of, about your story is you were already doing yeah. what a lot of people try first which is foam rolling stretching and going to the gym and strengthening things yeah um and when you started doing the FAI Fix program and working with me, we were still doing those things, but in a deeper way, in a particular way. We're still massaging things. We're still stretching things, and we're still strengthening things. But the devil's in the details. Um, it's like it's it's kind of counterintuitive for someone to think, oh, this kid is still massaging and stretching and strengthening things, but he's getting better. And I'd I'd love for you to discuss a little bit, like how can it be that you're still doing the same broad categories of things, massaging, stretching, strengthening, but it's now helping. What was different about what we started to do? So in what we did, there's a lot more intent behind everything, and there's a lot more experimentation on my end. For me, I, I realized, you know, through working with you and through experimentation, that the tissue work for the, like, lateral glutes um, and sort of like the uh, TFL area was really what was going to make a big difference, or what, what what eventually began making a big difference for me. It, I didn't have to focus too much on the front of the quads, although I did, but it's sort of the the back area opening up that range, and then teaching myself like how to actually relax the front of my hips so that you can sit into that is honestly what what made a big difference. Like at the end of the day, the, the essence of like getting over FAI is figuring out ways to like hinge deeper with pain-free uh, properly. So I just want to pause here and just, focus on something they said where he had to focus on experimenting and really finding the things that help him unlock his hips. And he also was cutting out things or deprioritizing things that weren't as beneficial. And that's, that's part of the process of understanding your own body. What works for uh, on Kush is going to be different for Shane. It's going to be different for me, different for whoever, right? So you have to be willing to experiment, check, see, pay attention, listen to your body and understand what your body is telling you in response to what you're doing with it. And, you know, that may seem like seem like it's kind of simple, but there's a whole slew of, po of possible things that you have to like look into and try in, in the lower leg and around the knee, back of the knee, hamstring, glute. Um, it, it, it's sort of like a, a puzzle. That you have to you, you i think you were the one that told me this but it's it's sort of like a puzzle that you have to you know put together and it's it's a difficult one uh i just want to pause here and look at the goblet squats 
Come on, whoever drew this, come on. That is not a god. There's so many ways this is not a goblet squat. Just, did, I mean, the physics, just of what's going on here, are just crazy. What human being can do that? Yeah, yeah. You definitely have to go beyond the first attempts of like, let me just mash around in this foam roller for yeah. in kind of a random way. More than just a generic yoga class. More than just a classic a bodybuilding, weightlifting split. It's got to yes. be, yeah, like you said, more intentional. Yeah, and, and something else you told me that really helped me mentally was that you said, one time you told me it's not a linear journey. Like your your path out of this is not going to be, like once you For find sure. something that works, it's not going to be up and up and up just out of the straight. It's like you're going to find something that works. That's going to get you so far. You're going to find something else that works in tandem with what else, with the other things that you learn, and that'll get you so far. And you have to like always be building upon that. And that, that was really important to remember on the days where okay. things weren't going well, like when, you know, things that I was trying wasn't, weren't really working and um, that just so knowing great. that uh, as long as I stuck with it and stuck to the the basics um, that I could prove out of this yeah nice what would be your one thing your top piece of advice your big takeaway or maybe takeaways if something comes to mind for anyone else who's similar to you dealing with hip problems uh yeah for sure yeah so um my my hip thing is supposed to be really really rare it's like an extreme form of FAI. It's called protrusio acetabuli. Basically, the hip sockets are, are twice as deep as they're supposed to be. But, you know, at the end of the day, it all has to do with, like, the muscles around the hip that are really restricting you. Some of you watching this that have that have sort of been hitting roadblocks and, and just feeling very frustrated um, probably have, have addressed uh, some of the things in your hips around the hip area. I would encourage you, you guys to uh, start to look into your lower leg, specifically your tibia and your lateral calf and you know the ankle joint and making sure that it's not like locked up and rotating properly because if you think about it like the ankle is a gyroscope the hip is a gyroscope if they can't rotate in tandem uh it's definitely going to cause a lot of problems with the chain so don't ignore the lower leg that's actually a really good point um if you're you know this can have to do with shoes this can have to do with ankle injuries foot injuries or wearing you know just having really stiff shoes and orthotics if your ankle and your foot are paralyzed if your the muscles of your lower leg are in some way not functioning well like it sounds like was the case for Anne Kush, then it's going to affect your knee and your hip which is going to affect everything so this is really great advice so don't ignore the lower leg is is uh my advice, like I, I sort of got the the hip area down pat, but I wasn't making the progress I wanted to. And then once I got the lower leg down, that's when things really started to open up really well. That's awesome. Yeah, very good advice because obviously if there's a site of pain or movement restriction in the hip, the first thought is keep working on the hip, nice. working on the hip. Which yeah, is yeah. True. You need to calm it down. You need to get it mm-hmm. rolling and sliding and gliding and moving better. But then there's these other parts of the body which definitely are, are affecting the, the hip as well and the foot is foot and ankle complex is one of the obvious culprits i like the analogy of like the whole body is is so connected it's like if i pull on my shirt here this mm-hmm. part of my shirt down here moves as well so if the ankle is right, yeah. really restricted and it's not moving and i'm trying to move up here at the hip something's going to go wrong because the whole chain is not working in coordination so excellent piece of advice well, I want to thank you so much for, for being on this call, for sharing your story. Um, yeah, I just really appreciate you and look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, yeah. Shane, it's always a pleasure. Uh, you know, forever we'll, we'll appreciate how you built me. So. All right, that is it for this video. Uh, this story is incredible. And Kush did an amazing job. Shane did an amazing job helping him figure out what he needed to do, giving him a little guidance, a little encouragement. The biggest takeaway from this video is that even if you have one of these crazy, rare, horrible things that somebody tells you is completely, terribly, permanently unchangeable and it's going to wreck your life, there's still hope, right? And Kush had this, this whole thing. You can't get better. You can't get better. It's impossible to get better. You're just going to need to have both your hips replaced before you're 30 years old. He is not 30 years old. He's getting better. He got back to doing sports, to swim, to what, to soccer. It is nuts how much change you can make to your body if you are willing to think ahead, if you're willing to experiment, if you're willing to try, if you're willing to fail and then try different things to try to get your body moving again. If you take nothing else away from this video, then take away this thought. However frustrated you are right now, 
your story could be the same as his. Your story could be just like Ann Cush's. You can be stuck and you can figure out how to unstick and make huge progress. So keep that in mind. Take the inspiration from Ann Cush, save that video, save this video, whatever you gotta do to keep your mind in the right state so that you can keep pushing ahead. Remember, it's not about bone shapes. It's not about all that stuff. It's about whether your muscles know how to move your bones. That's why we ATM always think muscles. Thanks for joining me to watch this video. If you want more resources, check out the videos that I'm gonna link here on screen. If you wanna support this channel, use the donate button you'll find in the description box or the join and thanks buttons on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks life shouldn't.